Hello everyone and welcome back to Kecho Crafts. I'm Sarah Scully and today um, I have a cold. <laughs> Actually it's been a really rough week um, here at Gecho Crafts. Uh, Rick is down with an injury. Um, I've had a really severe sinus infection all week so um, <clears throat> that's why there wasn't a video last week. I couldn't even speak and uh, I apologize but um, as you can tell I'm still a bit under the weather but I thought I'd bring you a video anyway. Um, now, originally the plan for the follow-up to Maryland Sheep and Wool had been for Rick and I to sit down together, kind of chat about our experience, um, but we've done that before for fiber festivals, so I didn't want to rehash too much, and um, also I didn't do a great job of documenting um, our visit this year, um, just got carried away, it was quite busy, so I just want to say thank you to everyone who stopped by the booth, said hi to us, we had a great time, and um, we... The, the new products seem to be a, quite a hit, so thank you for purchasing those. Uh, those of you who were able to pick up um, lotion cream or a new project bag, the knitting kits were also quite a hit. So thank you again for all your support and for um, just enjoying what we make and, uh, and chatting with us. We really appreciate it. So um, I did want to talk, though, about some purchases that I made at Maryland Sheep and Wool. Um, now, I don't always have a big list when I go to these festivals, um, especially in this last year or so. I've been trying to sort of knit down my stash a little bit more, spend more time hand spinning, um, and spend a bit more time designing, um, which means that I can't always keep the, the things that I make. Um, but Marilyn took me by surprise because I got uh, yarn for a new sweater. So um, I had been thinking about making the wool and honey sweater from Andrea Mowry. Um, those of you who are following, again, new knitting patterns will probably have seen this. It's been quite popular. Um, it's a very different design. It's, it's quite unique in terms of what I've seen recently coming out. Um, it's a textured yoke pattern, as the name implies. That texture comes from, or uh, looks like honeycomb, so that the honey component. And Andrea uh, originally knit her sample in kind of a rusty orange color, um, but after seeing the explosion of yellow sweaters all over Instagram, um, I decided I wanted one in yellow. Now yellow is a color I haven't been very comfortable with in my own wardrobe. Um, I've always thought it looked a little strange on me. Um, but I've decided that's not really the case. Um, you all, if you've uh, been watching the channel for a while, or if you go back and watch some of our older videos, you'll see me wearing a yellow hat that I made. That's the Bethel hat, my own pattern, in a beautiful um, kind of a creamy, buttery yellow from Green Mountain Spinnery. And I really like the way that hat looks on me. I think it, it um, contrasts with my eye color. I think it looks fine with my skin tone. Um, so... That's really encouraged me to kind of pursue other um, <clears throat> or incorporating more yellow into my wardrobe um, and more color in general. I have often tended towards dressing in a lot of black, a lot of gray, kind of safe shades. Um, even as you can see on today, I'm wearing a lot of color. I'll talk about this in just a second. Um, so I wanted to break out of that rut and knit myself a few colorful sweaters. I have a couple of patterns in mind for um, colorful sweaters uh, that I already have the yarn for, but I didn't have anything to knit wool and honey with. Now the funny thing about going into Maryland is I wasn't even going to necessarily get the, the yarn for that sweater at that festival. I had in mind some other things I wanted to get, including um, <clears throat> some bats for hand spinning from a particular vendor, um, but it was funny because on Saturday when we would have a lull, Rick would say, okay, go out, do your shopping now's your chance. And so I'd go and I'd kind of just, you know, go on a mission to one specific spot and check out whatever it was that was on my list. And a lot of the things that I thought I was going to purchase um, just weren't there. Um, either the colors had sold out or um, in one case the vendor didn't bring um, a certain part of their range that I was interested in looking at. So I just didn't end up uh, making those purchases. So I had a bit of my budget that um, I hadn't spent. And so then on Sunday, uh, it was a little bit quieter in the morning, and I decided to go down and see my friend Jill Draper and 
just kind of, you know, give her high five, see how her, her, uh, uh, you know, her festival was going and see what she had for yarns. And lo and behold, now I knew she was going to bring this yarn, but I hadn't seen it in person before. Um, but she brought this. Um, this is Mohonk Light from Jill Draper Makes Stuff. And it's in the colorway called Gold Star. But if that does not say honey to you, I don't know what does. It's this beautiful, rich yellow color. Um, it has hints of almost a, uh, a darker, like a burnt honey or burnt caramel color in there. And when it knits up, I can show you a swatch. Um, it's just a lovely, lovely color. Slightly variegated, as she usually does, but not so much that it's going to take away from the design of the sweater. But at the same time, it's going to add a rich depth to the texture of the sweater overall. And it's funny because the put up on this is sort of in a lace weight class. It's 550 yards for four ounces. So it would be considered a light fingering or maybe verging on lace. But as you can see, it's a very thick fingering weight yarn. And I think the reason for that is the discrepancy between what the yardage says and kind of what the yarn looks like. Um, is that this is a woolen spun yarn. So it's fluffy um, and it's got a lot of bounce to it. It's very smushy. Um, the fabric has a lot of elasticity and bounce. So because of that yarn characteristic, this is knitting up at more like a heavy fingering weight um, than you know something like a lace or something like that. Um, but you get the bonus of this extra yardage. So there's probably a hundred more yards in this, in each skein of this, than you would find in like a comparable um, worsted fingering weight, right? Because for worsted, you would usually get more like maybe 430 yards, something like that, for four ounces, 430, 450. So <clears throat> for that reason, it's a really good value. Um, you know, even though Jill has to price her yarns so that she can make a living, and I would say they're probably mid-range in terms of the most expensive yarn you can buy versus, um, you know, a discount brand like a, uh, a Knit Picks or your 100% your wool like Lion brand, um, which, are, which are great yarns too, but this is probably somewhere in the middle in terms of price, but I think in terms of value, it's a really good one. And, uh, and this video is not sponsored. <laughs> um, you know, I paid my own money for this. But that's just something to think about when you're comparing different yarns. Um, look at the yardage that you get. Look at the way that the, um, the yarn is going to be knitting up. And not only match it to your pattern, but also match it to um, your yardage needs and um, other yarns. In that category and you might be surprised at you know the way the math kind of works out on the on the cost um, now I said I wasn't looking for um, the yarn for that sweater to specifically get that at Maryland but I knew I didn't want to use the yarn that was prescribed in the pattern I was looking for something else and I had looked online at um, another company um, from Susan B Anderson she has her Wisconsin woolen spun yarn which is um, beautiful. I've seen it thoroughly reviewed on a couple of other podcasts, including um, Amy Beth of the Fat Squirrel um, did an extensive review of it. And so I was looking forward to using that yarn, um, which is a little bit less expensive than the Jill Draper yarn. Um, but they've been sold out for, of m many of their colors for a little while, and I don't know when they're going to get those restocked because they also do small batch, um, small batches in their production. So I saw this color and I just decided to go ahead and get it. So, so that's what I'm working on. Um, I've knit a couple of swatches as you've seen. I haven't quite got gauge yet. Um, one of the things I wanted to mention about working on this pattern is that I'm going to be using the helical knitting method. So you can see here in my current swatch, I have two yarns 
coming off. And this is doing two things for me. One is it's allowing me to um, alternate skeins, which is always recommended for hand dyed yarn that's slightly variegated so that you don't get obvious um, pooling or an obvious um, break when you shift um, skeins. If I were to knit this entire ball and, and for part of the sweater and then jump into this one, you might get a horizontal line where you could see where I'd switch skeins. So um, alternating skeins helps that avoid that problem. The other thing for this pattern in particular is that the start of round is in the center back of the sweater and the sweater's knit in garter stitch in the round. So that means you're alternating between a row of knit and a row of purl, a row of knit and a row of purl. And when you do that <clears throat> in the round, you get a, a faux looking seam. It's not really a, a true seam because you're not joining anything together or sewing anything together, but you get a false seam where the rows of knit and purl stitches kind of stack on each other as you start each round. And it's very obvious, um, and you can see it in some of the um, sample knit um, or featured photos on the pattern page on Ravelry. And I don't like that look. Um, <clears throat> I understand mathematically that was probably the best place to put the start of round to explain how to make the sweater. Um, but to me, it really takes away from the design to have that very visible vertical line all the way down the back of the sweater. And so with helical knitting, <clears throat> what you do is you can eliminate things like um, jogs at a color change or <clears throat> this kind of vertical line between rows of um, garter stitch knit and around um, because you, you never catch up with yourself, so you never... Um, you never have a stacked seam. Um, so you can see here as an example, I have, this is the yarn I was just knitting with um, on the previous round. And I've come around now on this row of pearls. And instead of knitting up to this um, next yarn and switching over, I'm just gonna slip these last few stitches and then drop that yarn and pick up with this one. All right, so here's the yarn I was just knitting with. I dropped that, let it hang out, slipped those stitches, and now I'll continue with this yarn. I'm not gonna knit a whole lot here, but I just wanna give you an idea. So now you can see, here's my beginning of round but there's no seam here, and there's no seam anywhere else on the fabric. There's no seam where I just switched yarns. You can't tell anywhere on here that I'm changing. Um, so it's, it's a very handy technique for a lot of different situations, and um, I just don't have it in me to do like an, you know, an in-depth tutorial on how to do this, but um, I did want to mention the technique because I'm going to be using it, and I will link to some other resources um, Jen Arnold Cullerford, um, she's done, uh, she and her husband released a year of techniques and a bunch of other um, knitting tutorials that are, that are very helpful. Um, they actually have an, an entire booklet and a series of videos on helical knitting, and I encourage you to check that out. I'll link it in the show notes. So um, that's kind of my, my big tip for this pattern, Wool and Honey. If you haven't knit one yet and you're thinking about it, um, go ahead and look at helical knitting. Um, practice it on your swatch um, so you can kind of get the hang of it and see if you like it. And if you're not knitting this sweater but you have another pattern that has, um, you know, two row, two row stripes or this kind of garter stitch in the round or anything else where you're going to be developing an obvious change every other row, um, helical knitting might be a good technique to look into. So um, <clears throat> more on that sweater as I get get going on it. As you know, um, this is not the kind of, uh, you know, video podcast where I update you constantly on what I'm knitting, what's in progress, and what's off the needles. 
Um, but I do like to mention um, projects and techniques that I think would be useful um, for other knitters. So hopefully that is. So getting back to the Maryland Cheap and Wool Festival, I just want to touch on one other purchase that I made, and it's more fingering weight yarn, um, which just really surprises me. I, especially for things like um, accessories and sweaters, you know, I usually go for a worsted weight or maybe a DK weight yarn because I like faster gratification on the, the production side. I enjoy knitting, of course, um, but I also get impatient and I want to see the final product and I have a hard time being patient when I'm knitting at a fine gauge. So it really surprised me um, that I came home with all fingering weight yarn, but um, of course my friend Ann Choi um, of Middlebrook Fiberworks, she makes beautiful uh, natural, natural colors of her yarns, and um, I hadn't had the opportunity to purchase them before. Um, they, they're very, very limited batch size, and they usually sell out right away. Um, so I was very happy to get my hands on two skeins of Vintage Number no. 6. Um, each of her yarns is slightly different, and so she goes by these vintage numbers, um, sort of like lot numbers, um, and once they're gone, they're gone. They can't really be reproduced. So her yarn is absolutely beautiful. I wish, I wish we had some kind of... Um, feel a vision or something like that, but it's absolutely beautiful. It's got a lovely sheen to it um, because this does have some silk content. So Anne takes the wool that she grows on her farm from her own Shetland sheep and blends it. Um, and this one has some fine wool. I believe it's, uh, it's either CVM or Cormo, um, something called Rami. Um, which is a traditional uh, plant-based fiber from Korea, and um, Anne's heritage is Korean. So she's been experimenting with adding this rami fiber into some of her yarns. And like a lot of plant fibers, it adds a certain um, luster and a certain crispness and lightness um, to when it's blended with wool. And then she's also added in some silk, 10% silk. Um, And this yarn, I don't know, I can't, it's hard to describe it. It's got a beautiful um, bouncy texture. The spin on it is very nice. So it has a lot of spring and pliability to it, which you wouldn't expect from a Shetland yarn, but the, the fine wool is going to add some of that bounciness to it. Um, but it also has that structure and that crispness to it. Um, it's going to feel really nice on the skin. Yeah. And I can, I can already tell that it's kind of, it has a cooler feel in a way um, than some yarns. It's when you touch it and you pick it up, it's actually a little bit cool to the touch. Um, so that's the, this is the natural cream color. And then she also did a gray, um, which is just gorgeous. And I think these two together are going to be beautiful in some kind of a color work project, maybe a hat and mitten set or something like that. Um, I've been thinking about doing the Swedish style Selbu uh, mittens with the intricate um, designs and they have different designs on the palms and the, the backs of the hands. I, I would love to knit a pair of those. I actually don't even know if I would wear them because I'm not much of a mitten person, but um, maybe for dressing up special occasions, that would be a nice thing to have in the winter time. Certainly I would, I would make a cowl or a hat or something else out of this. Um, and it's quite a lot of yarn. It's, how much yardage do we have here? 396, so just about 400 yards in each. So 800 yards would get you certainly some kind of a set um, <clears throat> to wear out. And I might even have, I was thinking about this, um, leftovers from the sweater project. And so if I do, then look at that. That could be really amazing too. And these are fairly comparable in um, in their weight. They're, they're all fingering. Um, the Jewel Draper looks a little bit skinny right here um, in between these two, but I think um, once it's washed, it's going to fluff up more and be really close in weight. So those three together are also very nice. So we'll see what happens with that. Um, <clears throat> the other thing I wanted to mention 
um, which doesn't really have to do with Maryland per se, although I did get some yarn uh, for the design I'm working on based on this. So I finished my big um, shawl wrap thing um, that I had been working on. Uh, you all will recall if you've been watching for a little while that the episode entitled Colorful Hand Spun is one where I talked about spinning these yarns, and so then I finished uh, knitting it into this. It's kind of a big, huge scarf or um, a small wrap, but I'm really pleased with the way this turned out. It was a great uh, way to explore color play and how colors um, look together uh, and interact when they're next to each other. I had a lot of fun mixing and matching. Um, I had to rework certain sections of this because I didn't necessarily like um, my first choice and the way that the colors were pairing up and that taught me a lot and informed um, an upcoming design that I'm working on right now. So it will be great to see um, kind of how this the roots of this inspiration with the, the colors from the hand spun go on to inform the, the final design for the, um, the wrap that I'm working on. Um, so I hope you all will stick around for that. That one should be coming out for the fall. Um, so thanks again for being here today. Again, I apologize for my kind of croaky voice um, and my low energy, but it's always nice to talk to everyone and uh, share with you. Um, I'd love to know if you've been to um, a recent event. There's been a lot of, you know, other fiber festivals going on on the East Coast. There's been yarn crawls. There's been all kinds of events happening. There's been some retreats up in Canada. So if, uh, if you've been to any of these events lately, let me know what your experience was. Let me know what you bought. I'd love to see um, your photographs. Um, let me know what you have planned to make with the things that you got. Thanks again for joining me. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the notification so you get new videos. We'll see you next week. Thanks.